party wagon and hold on to your pizza. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Epic Tales from the Sewers. I am your host, Justin. With me, per usual, is my good friend, Mr. Eric Will. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing fantastic. How you doing? How you doing there, Justin? I can't complain. We've, we've got a great guest today. So we uh, we pull out all the stops and we uh, we in, invited the uh, head of Tentacle 10. Is, is it studios or is it a Tentacle 10 store? Uh, what would you call it? But uh, Mr. David Wynn. Hey, thanks. Uh, it's it's an, I like to think of it as an entertainment company because uh, we have grand scheming for where it will grow to. So like, nice. Yeah. I, I love the logo, by the way, that one, one of my mm-hmm. questions I wanted to ask is, uh, who drew your logo? So funny thing is that um, my best friend since the third grade is actually one of the lead heads of uh, creative at Adobe. And so, um, wow. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. He, like, he, he doesn't love the big Adobe um, shows or conventions. So when they do their big TED Talks or their big expos, like, kind of like South by Southwest style. He does all of, all of the uh, logos and he does all of the like video um, images and for digital assets for for that, for that Adobe. So I like went to him one day and was like, hey, um, I'm starting up this new company. Do you, do you think you could do a logo up for me? And he was like, sure. Nice. Goes, yeah. <laughs> that's the friend to have because that's a great logo. I mean, like to me, I, I was thinking, I'm like, it's kind of like an octopus, but mixed with, uh, if you remember the Dark Horse comic named X, it kind of reminded me of that or, or even like Red X from Teen Titans. I'm like, that's pretty sick. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's like little, little nuances that are in there because there's definitely the X inside of the 10 and the, in the head. And, you know, that's Roman numeral for 10. So mm-hmm. yep. you know, I had to incorporate that all in there. So it was, it was, it was interesting because it was uh, a lot of iterations we went through. And uh, I like this one because it has kind of a Venom spider man vibe. Oh, to definitely. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, you know, it's an octopus, which is essentially the, uh, the mascot for the uh, company or a neutron, one of the two. <laughs> nice. I like that. Well, if we, we could say it's a squid because squids have 10, uh, 10 tentacles. That's so. true. We could do that too. So, yeah. It, it's just, any, you know, it's just basically any kind of cephalopod, you know, yeah, you know, some, Nautilus, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll just warn you. I, I did go to school to be a marine biologist. I am not a marine biologist, but I did go to school okay. for it. So I'm like, I'm like, we can continue down this road all you like. I am in. Yes. <laughs> what's, what's your favorite cephalopod? Come on. Oh, come on. Uh, e- easily oh, the um, the Nautilus, but the, I like the cuttlefish a lot. But the super Nautilus is up there. Cuttlefish is my favorite because oh, they're, they're delicious. The they're delicious. Besides them being delicious, they they have more colors that are found in nature than any other animal. So um, just with, with all like little photoreceptor cells that they have, it's fantastic. So er, Eric has no idea that I knew this much about mollusks. So. No, I, <laughs> nope. You learn something new about uh, about someone every day. That's actually pretty no. interesting, though. I, I'm a, one of the things that I always uh, think about when we're we're like on the road and like meeting people is I'm curious, like. What, what do they do? What, do you, what do you guys do, you know, for a living? Like, you know, what, what kind of things do you do from your nine to five that kind of drive your passion to, to turtles from six to nine? That's what I always say. Um, so it's always interesting to find out what, you know, what you do here, Justin, and you do, Eric. So. Oh, yeah. So uh, me during the day, I underwrite mortgages. So that's that's what I do. And then the, after that, I start thinking about, you know, like, hey, what do I want to talk talk about when it comes to this? And, you know, hey, what's coming out? And we're, we're pretty excited about this new Cowabunga collection that's coming, you know, like all, all these kind of things that come out through the day. But what gets me through my day is these little updates in the news of, of like what's going on and, you know, what new covers are coming out and who's got the newest uh, Ronin variant. And that's that's kind of where, where Eric comes in because he seems to be the guy lately that knows where to get you the book you're like oh you need that like just ask eric he's seen it some guy has it <laughs> oh okay yeah no i mean uh eric has kind of been the uh you know whenever someone says i know a guy he always ends up being that guy yeah, he right? always oh, that guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, um like me i'm just i'm a stay home dad uh i volunteer at my son's school um you know i help help the school out do whatever and all that stuff but also you know i'm very very um involved with the turtle communities that we have you know between the idw group that that i um that i help run as well as epic shows and other groups that i see and 
you know, I try to help people out, you know, you know, kind of point them into the right directions. Like I've helped, um, you probably know him, Steve, uh, Steve Luna, big shout out to him. Um, he, I know he's bought some comics off of you as well as, uh, some very, very, uh, you know, rare comics, the metal comics that, uh, metal covers he's gotten for the Ronins. Oh, that's right. Him. Yeah. Yeah. You were telling yeah, me about um, that last week about them. Yeah, the the Ken Kukas, the 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 personal issues of Ken Kukas from Singapore, and then the owners from Artigen that actually had like personal ones. I they just came to me. They literally just talked to me about it, and then it just went from there. So, <laughs> but that's that's pretty much what I what I do is I just I try to help out anybody that's that's you know a collector of the turtles that you know that's trying to find something. I just try to help them out. Yeah, and I mean, it definitely doesn't hurt that you're uh, you're very you're fairly affable. You know, you basically everyone seems to be able to talk to you. I mean, I've talked to people all the time, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I just, you know, I just ask this guy." And like I said, it always that guy always ends up being you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we like to we like to represent the positive uh, part of the fandom too, because the like turtles fandom can be great it can be fantastic and it can also be like super dark when you get into like the guys who are trying to collect like the accessories to like the, the ninja turtle action figures and all that it gets brutal man and it's like we don't want any part of that no buy and sell stuff in the groups normally like we moderate it it's like and i mean like like we've even had to like talk to like turtle creators before like not like kevin and all that but like people who have like worked on the book and we're like we get it you don't like this that's great move on you know and it's like and we will you know keep the peace whatever way we can because it, it's it's such a positive thing it's like everybody loves this stuff let's just talk about what we like if you don't like it move on you know no i completely agree i think um ultimately my my point has always kind of been whatever keeps it kind of in the public consciousness you know um like R rise for example when rise came out just everybody just basically embased the crap out of it. It was just like universally like dead pandas. You know, they look funny, they look weird, stuff like that. But like I said, my kids loved it. Um, and, and like my thought was, hey, as long as like you know the next generation has catched on to something, um, they, they'll they'll have something for when they're teenagers to kind of gravitate to, and then when they're adults, you know, they're gonna gravitate to it again, and then their kids, and hopefully it'll. You know, it'll be one of those things where where, where Kevin has multiple. If you actually mentioned this a couple of times, where Turtles has now become a multi generational IP. So um, you started out in the '80s as a comic book, and then think about those guys who bought that comic. They had kids in the '90s who were like us, and we watched the cartoons, and now our kids are watching Rise. And in theory, they will watch this Seth Rogen movie. I think in four or five years when they're old enough. Um, <laughs> But, oh, uh, so it's it's going to be that is it the pg-13 version or well i mean the thing about it is that uh seth rogan is definitely um he's definitely playing up the uh the teenage aspect of it and so uh i think the part of your teenage aspect of it also so basically when i when i think about it i just think about super bad meets ninja turtles so in some well, his form. company's doing invincible you know <laughs> so i I'm, I'm sure did you get a chance to watch the first season of invincible on amazon i watched a couple of the episodes yeah it was uh really really well done um that's so good yeah i think as I, I i basically share that account with like three you know kids under 10 so some of that stuff kind of gets buried down yep. in, in the queue so i've seen a couple episodes it's super brutal um and i've read the comic i've read the comic all the way through issue 100 so everything i saw so far is pretty much on par yeah it's it's super close to the the source material and i'm like the this is just yeah, yeah. It, it translates very well so i mean i'm i'm optimistic about it because i mean you could you could be on one side or the other of anything but i mean with this it's like i'm, I'm just gonna check it out because there's redeeming parts of the bay movies they're not my favorite but i i I stand up to anybody and say that second movie is hilarious. I will watch the <laughs> hell out of that. Like Bebop and Rocksteady make that movie. And and Tyler Perry was an amazing Baxter. Like he was great in that role. So it's like, there's a lot of watchable pieces for it. And, and a lot of people are like, Oh, Michael Bay. I'm like, I get it. I get it. It's mm -hmm. not my favorite, but like, you know, people yeah. said this about like literally everything. Like they pan the 2007 movie, which was amazing. It's just like, it's, I don't know, you know, haters gonna hate. I know, and with the Michael Bay stuff, I, I, 
So my question to those people has always been, I mean, this conversation comes up at the booth all the time, but the conversation always um, ends up being me saying, like, what did you expect out of it? Like, are you expecting it to be like Shakespeare when you're coming into it? <laughs> you know it's Michael Bay. Like, you know what to expect. Yeah. Like, temper your expectations. Um, the greatest thing about that movie was that we saw a bebop and a rock steady, which was unbelievable. And like, crane. we saw a lot. Yeah, and yeah, crane. Yeah. Um, so there were, yeah, like you said, there were redeeming qualities out of, out of that movie. Um, funny story about that movie, too, is that we were, we were doing a signing in Hawaii, and they were streaming it on Twitch, and they couldn't figure out what kind of soundtrack to play in the background. So I told them to play the soundtrack for, for that movie, and uh, they did. It was actually really funny, like, listening to it, like, while Kevin was signing. Um, there's, like, a little hard rock stuff in there, too, in terms of, like, the soundtrack soundtrack, so. Yes, I, I don't know. We last episode we were talking about the uh, the soundtrack from the the uh, Secret of Views, and um, just like how how good that was, and and they just re released it on um, like a green pressed vinyl with like Toka and Razor with all Kevin's art and all that. Like those are really fun. And I always go back to like the first movie with like all the songs from that one. That was a banging soundtrack, man. There were some great tunes on that. Yeah. Hey, who was the uh, the person who did the soundtrack for that? They they always are they're like a rap group do you remember the name of them was oh it? yeah uh was that partners in crime, partners in crime. In crime. that's yeah. right partners yeah. in crime yeah i got i got the single on cassette yeah that was it was like <laughs> raf raf and he's going like this you know mm-hmm. how do you that's play great. it though i mean do you do you have like an do you have a functional cassette player or no i don't i don't have, have a cassette Ford player I, to be honest with you there's a lot of stuff that i have in here that doesn't get touched okay i would imagine that would be one of them yeah and i was gonna say yeah. like i imagine the tapes on those things are probably pretty brittle at this point yeah they would hold yeah up. i mean i got uh i actually have like one through three even the um uh, the um what is it uh coming out of the shell tour one as well partners in crime vanilla ice oh yeah i think one, i got two. What is it? I've got these right back here. Like I just, I just picked these up from a friend. Like I've got the VHS tapes. One's the coming yeah. out of the shells tour, and I don't know if you have this one, Eric. I may have to send you that. Uh, one. Actually, I do have that one. I you do. do. Okay. I, yeah. I do. I, I have to do. Like I said, I have to do an inventory in my room, which right now my room is going to be under construction because we're working on getting shelves put in, so I can have shelves that way. I could put, I can put stuff up neatly a little bit more better but also get more stuff in here <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sure your wife because, is thrilled about that <laughs> hey this the, to be honest with you this is my the shelves thing is my wife's idea oh okay she, so, all right good she, she supports she supports my habit which yeah. you know like i said you know she had it in our wedding she did all these surprises to put it in our wedding so you know i it's it's crazy that she wants to do all this and i'm i mean i'm not going to say no <laughs> of I course mean. not yeah especially if it's her idea right it's her idea totally exactly and then when she tries to blame me i could be like look honey this is completely your idea it's by, by the way is she gonna listen to this so <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know just make sure that you don't say anything bad so it's my cat he just wants to say hello so, uh, David, uh, were you by any chance on the um, that uh, Halloween special that uh, Kevin had done maybe in, was it 2020, 2020 or 2021? Yeah, so that was when I was with the old company that I started, uh, Comics and Ponies, and uh, we had did a um, Kevin Con line. It was Kevin Con line because it was a uh, Halloween virtual convention appearance in theory so yeah, what we, did is we had a panel good time yeah we had a couple of auctions we had him do some live sketching um he did two last ronin covers that he did on on like facebook live or instagram live or something like that they were pretty amazing um, we needed mm-hmm. to auction them off or raffling them off and um they obviously were super expensive but they were also uh now that they or at CGC in 9.8 and all that. And they have the remarks that say like first ever sketch cover. It's probably worth a lot more, especially now with inflation. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually seen one of those up for sale too. And it's, oh, wow. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, that's just a sad moment for me. A sad, uh, sad moment. Well, I mean, you know, it's one of the things where 
you know, yeah, the people, people got have. them and then they slab them and, you know, I mean, who knows, they're upgrading for something else, but, you know. Like yeah. a car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Those things making up to market is actually good, I feel, for, for some collectors who, you know, didn't have a chance at it or weren't into the hobby at the time. Yeah. Um, it's always yeah. good. Yeah, I, I was thinking it's good I, that stuff. I'm a stingy person. I don't like, I don't like uh, selling any of my stuff or giving my stuff in it but i do i do help with like giveaways and stuff me and me and justin do giveaways you know like i got a couple extra issues of issue three and four which i plan on getting signed by ben and kevin and then me and him are going to do like you know a raffle a raffle and try to you know raise for some some kind of charity or yeah, we were talking about like either a wounded warrior or something like that to do so yeah, absolutely so yeah, and I mean we've we've done it before. Like I, I actually gave away a statue, like when uh, we first started the show, like the old uh, the Good Smile uh, Turtle one. So, oh, wow. you know, it's pretty big. Yeah, that's and, and it was just one of those things where it's like you know it's here. You know, just get the people listening. You get like three, four hundred people listening to an episode. They go in on it, and it's like, all right, cool, man. You know, hit me up. So, <laughs> that's fun. yeah. But um, go, going back to my original uh, thought there, um, we actually so we had watched that and, and we had Norrie Davis on the show here after that. Oh, um, wow. Dude, he was such a blast, man. And just like the, the cool sort of stuff that we would go into about like turtles. He's like, man, I just, I never get to talk like this. You know, it's like, That's he's really like awesome. talking about like, like uh, collecting uh, like Batman action figures and stuff like that. And a- afterwards we, um we actually sent him a, a, a Batman, um, 1989 batman minton card or something to go with this uh batmobile that he bought while he was in chicago i'm like dude that's just awesome so that's awesome no he is uh he's supremely talented i don't know if you guys watch dickinson or not on apple tv no um i I have that yeah you should totally watch it it's uh it's about emily dickinson and uh it's kind of like a modernized stylized version of it but he he's in season two i believe and uh he plays a, a soldier in the army. I think he's fighting for the North and it's just absolutely has you in stitches the whole time. Um, he's actually on tour right now. And he's recording know, an album, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if, if I don't know if this is, I'm, I'm allowed to say this or not, but um, there's a specific artist that we know who is actually doing the album art for him. Uh, no for, kidding. For his new stand up album. Yeah. He's a, um, He's an artist we all know. He's all near and dear to us. He's a little eccentric and goofy. Um, oh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> does he like to use a lot of ink? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, um, has he worked on heavy metal before? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. It's not him. It's 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 oh, okay. somewhat, a little bit younger. A little bit younger, but uh, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who it is. I mean, put that offline. Oh, you know, oh. Text. Let's see what part. I can tell. Uh, maybe Eric, I'll text him Eric, I'm assuming it's who's on your T-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, look down. That's uh, no one else could see because it's a visual thing. So yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it that uh, one? A, no comment. I uh, yeah, it's sorry, probably yeah. It pr- I'll, it probably text him, I'll text them and I'll ask if it's okay. It's all good. <laughs> but um they, they yeah, they hooked up uh after the uh Halloween special that we, we ran and um they just got to chatting and uh they you know loved the style and was like, hey, can you do this? So yeah, that's I so mean, much fun. There were a lot of great sketches. I, I for now that I think about it, because Ben did three sketches and Ciro did three sketches, or did they did three or four? Um, but in any case, there was like at least twelve sketches that came out of that event. It's pretty amazing. But yeah, and, and I mean, like Eric saying, they make their way around. Like I, I was surprised that I, I had seen a couple up for sale on eBay not too long afterwards, and I'm like, oh, this is the the horror one where he looks like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm like, where did that come from? I I would have held on to that thing with my death grip, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially since, you know, I think, uh, you know, they, they're, it's one of those tricky things because they're, they're so coveted too, because they have the, uh, the special late, you know, denotes that they were done under the, the Halloween special. Oh, like no kidding. Everything. Yeah. So working with CGC is pretty nice because, you know, we get to basically um, kind of go back and forth about what we, think you know when people remark things what they should be called or what they should put it on it so um yeah they did a really good job of uh of helping us out and you know denoting that it was done during that event so that's really fun Pop to cgc <laughs> i i love your shirt by the way the kevin easton uh oh yeah club. so is yeah. that 
Is that the new tour shirt? This is the new tour shirt. I actually, you know, I broke it out. Fiona um, Russell, uh, shout out to Team Eastman Studios in Northampton, um, sent me uh, a couple of pairs ahead of the tour because we're going to, these are pretty much our tour uniforms. So whenever anybody sees us, we're always wearing this. So this is, you know, our the one they sent me. And so if you haven't done so, go to the, the Kevin Eastman Studios um, website and pick up one. Uh, it's pretty awesome because if you have one of these on the tour, um when you show up at the booth usually you get like a free print or a free signature or something like that um That's if you awesome. have a fan club membership too you're guaranteed a free print when you show up and you know you oh. always get the red carpet rolled out for you um whenever you show up with that little placard or card yeah i'm, I'm i think i'm like two years in you know um like <laughs> i i definitely have. that's the one thing i re-up every year yeah, it's mm. like, uh, you know, you get, it's worthwhile because, you know, the, the, the package you or the welcome package you get when you re-up, it's kind of worth the, the price of admission alone. And then on top of that, access to all the other stuff, like, um, you know, all the different Ronin variants that have come out that, you know, you're going to pay 120 bucks somewhere. You can get them on the site for 35 bucks if, you, uh, if you're a member. So, you know, if you want to be an uh, entrepreneurial capitalist and, <laughs> you know, get, the, get that. And then clearly get the, not us. Yeah. Not <laughs> you. If you wanted to be an entrepreneurial capitalist, you would uh, get the membership and then go to eBay and flip them all, right? <laughs> so so with, with having, like, the access to, like, the direct access to Kevin and stuff like this and, and like, just being in the industry how you are, you, you must have run into like some sort of like really cool collectible or something like that or maybe you even have it yourself what's the coolest piece that you've seen or you've seen like someone buy or that you have yourself the the coolest piece i've seen is going to be the rich horn tmnt photo negatives um i don't know if you guys have seen these or not but that rich, sounds horn, interesting. rich horn who runs uh tmnt a collection the largest catalog collection of tmnt comics uh, yep. in the history of mankind actually <laughs> since since the dawn yeah. of, since the dawn of <laughs> man no one has ever cataloged a collection as good as this one um but he uh, came across these four negatives um, online and i believe he messaged the owner and was like hey uh, i think you're going to sell these or if you're going to sell these let me know and they ended up brokering a deal and so what he did is he went out and bought them and then he examined them and he basically found out that back in the day when you would print out uh, a comic book you did this negative version or some sort of uh, negative version of it before you printed it so he actually has the strips or the negative strips that he used to make Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one so it's an old archaic printing mechan like way, way of doing things that they did back in the 80s they don't do it anymore um, I think there's like one printing company in france that does it but uh, nobody does it anymore so he has these and uh hopefully someday people will be able to see them other than me um wow. the first time i oh, saw them man. he was explaining to us like how they were cut in specific parts of the negatives that transferred over um like you know miscolorations and stuff like that so it was actually pretty awesome to see it was like a pretty pretty uh central piece of uh, tmnt history Oh, I can only imagine. I mean, and, and what was the original run was like, what, 3,000? I think it was 3,000, yeah. yeah. Something very, very tiny. So cheers if you have one of those. And I mean, I've seen a good bit of those through, you know, the past couple of years. And I've seen them come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, actually. Um, one of the most interesting ones that I ever saw was a, a guy just comes up in some line and he's got a manila folder. Like a straight up manila folder like you would have in the office. And he opens them up, and they're two first print uh, turtles number ones. And this is probably 2018, um, and this is 2018 North Carolina, I believe. So he opens it up, and there's just these two pristine copies. And I was like, "Hey, where the heck did you get these? Why aren't they in the sleeve? And like, why are there people breathing on this?" Um, he said that <laughs> they were in a manila folder. They were in his garage on a shelf for the last 20 odd years, and. They were cleaning it out and they found it and they, they saw that Kevin was coming into town. So he was going to get him signed and, you know, sell him. Yeah, like no that. problem. <laughs> I mean, it was, it uh, was like um, Antiques Roadshow a little bit. Yeah. Before. We were explaining to him what it was. And at the time I was like, you realize this is like a $17,000 book. And 
Now it's probably like 117,000, but uh, at the time I was telling him, $17,000 book, you've got like, you know, uh, a couple a thousand dollars here. Uh, you should probably protect this. And so um, we told him the spiel, he said, you see that they came back at nine, two and nine, four. Wow. I don't, I don't know if he wow. ever sold them, but if he did, he should have waited until 2021 and <laughs> the price spikes. But, yeah. yeah. It's it's crazy too because like like you're you're talking about inflation, but it's like I can't remember the last time that Turtles was the most important thing in the world of comics because I I couldn't tell you what's going on right now with DC or Marvel or anything like that. You know, I, I I'm sure they've got some crossover coming up and all that, but everything is Last Ronin, everything is NECA, everything is this movie's coming out, all this stuff. It's like it's the hottest property right now. You know, I mean, obviously Batman's huge because the movie just came out and, you know, like we're in between Marvel stuff and all that. But it's like with this last issue coming out on what, the 26th of April now, you know, it's this is the biggest thing in comics. At least that's my perspective. I, I don't know do you, if you agree, but um, what do you think? Like, is this is this like the the heyday of Turtles again or? No, I definitely think that we are we're in a, the dawn of a new age of Turtles. It's um you know, it's a little bit of the timing too. Uh, there's a there's an old saying in the collectible, in the collectible realm. It's called the year the law of thirty. So um, after thirty years, things instantly just just jump in value. So if you look back in the annals of comics, you'll see like the John Byrne X Men books. They <laughs> yeah. thirty years, and all of a sudden they spiked. You know, then the Days of Future Past those spikes. Um, and so you know, there the thought is that that's happening with Turtles right now too. It's the law of thirty. It, it's hit thirty and you've gotten that spike and, you know, it being what we said earlier, an intergenerational IP, um, you're now seeing the third generation come into it. So um, that that's also kind of giving kind of this resurgence to the brand Um, in the world of comics too. No, I completely think you're right. Um, The sales numbers speak for themselves. If you go to uh, comicron.com, so it's comic C H R O N. um, It's actually a sales website and they actually give you, the monthly sales numbers for every single book and Ronin has been top five or top 10 every single month that it's been released. Now, um, you know, I've been in the turtle comic game for quite a bit and, you know, I've been making variants and publishing comics in the turtle realm for almost eight years now, nine years. Um, so I remember very vividly, the years when the Turtle ongoing series, like you're looking at issues like 66, 67, we're slogging through into like the 70s and, and the print You can runs. say it. It was the Triceraton War. You can say yeah, it. Yeah, it was the Triceraton. I'm not, yeah. I love Triceratons. And, you know, yeah. I love, I love it, just, it just didn't have the, the bite. I know exactly what you're talking about because that's what I go to, too. And I'm like, you know what? I was reviewing it that time for Comic Watch. And I'm like, they can do better. I'm like, but it's... I love it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. Like... I loved it. I loved it. But, uh, <laughs> it was just, you know, the, it, the sales numbers at the time, I believe we were looking, Turtles Ongoing was doing like six, 7,000, 8,000 uh, units a month. And, um, and if you look at what was going on at the time too, it's like, it, it's probably white noise because there's like, oh, they're doing this big crossover over at Marvel and it's mm-hmm. like all the same kind of stuff. And it's like, I think at that time it was like War of the Realms was out or something. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of the same stuff. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Maybe so, it's just originality. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you so like I said, I, we saw that lull. And so seeing it now where the units are in the hundreds of thousands, that's, that's kind of insane to see, um, you know. And uh, so there's a couple of things with resurgence. Like I said, the, the, the generational thing. And then um, what, the other thought that I've heard, I've heard this from a couple of people is that they think that the other properties are becoming a little bit too saturated. Like the Marvel stuff has become a little bit too saturated. And so, like, kids and, you know, disenchanted tweens are like, uh, Marvel's not cool. So they're trying to find something that's going to be anti-Marvel, right? And so... All these kids are going to end up reading Saga. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) They're going to read Saga and Ice Cream Man and I I don't know what else is really out there. But um, I don't know. Just do what I do, kids. Read Valiant books. So, exactly. you know, exactly, yeah. you, know yeah. you get you get one every three months or something like that. They're they're good. You know, um, yeah, I, I did a whole episode one time on Valiant books. I, I love them. So we'll get a nice. Ninjack crossover. That would be fantastic. Turtles and Ninjack. Wasn't great. there supposed to be a Ninjack movie? There was, yes. uh, there was yes. some talk about a Ninjack movie. And then um, 
was Jason it? David, David Frank. Frank. Yeah, so Jason and, David and, Frank, yeah. and he played Bloodshot in it, and it was uh, uh, Ninjak versus the Valiant Universe. It was fantastic. It's you can find it on YouTube actually. It's, yeah, they did I, this whole thing. I remember um, one of my friends had uh, seen him in that role, and they they saw him at a convention, and they were like, "Yeah, good job, man." He was like, "Thanks." Yeah, so he's, he's a cool guy. We're actually going to see him. Uh, in Lexington, so mm-hmm. anyone who's going to Lexington will see him there, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to line up and we'll see him. Do, do you get to go see Ron Perlman? I probably will. I've seen him. Uh, you know, he's a regular in the convention circuit. I see him a good bit. He um, he drinks an awful lot of whiskey, from what I remember. So oh, I you, know, you always find him at the bar, and he's always got whiskey. Apparently, hey, so so speaking of like cons and all that, who has surprised you that they're like interested in Ninja Turtles? Like maybe you tell them what you do, like oh yeah, really? Because I'm always shocked, and like what what blew me away is that like Robin Williams was a huge Ninja Turtles fan. I had no idea, you know, and and I'm just like a huge fan of his and all that, and just to think that like he was like super into this, and he's the reason that Judith Hogue actually did the movie was because he can convinced her to do it and i'm like holy crap he probably had one of those original 3000 run issues of the comic you know there are um see, there are tons of people who you would be into like uh jason momoa he's, really he's, yeah what? huge huge turtles fan um wow he was uh where were we? we were at albuquerque comic con and uh he's obviously the star of the show his huge presence he's like walking and hordes of children like running after him um <laughs> you know, like i said he's jason Monroe, he's aquaman this is the height of aquaman this is basically justice the league just hit oh, wow. um hey how you doing uh just the league <laughs> I just love hit. It. yeah there's my daughter um biggest star in the world at the point and uh you know we see this like crowd of people come around the corner and then he basically comes and appears <laughs> and he says to Kevin, he says to Kevin, his wife was a sweetheart, shakes his hand. And uh, sorry about that. Sorry. Um, no. He's, yeah, so anyway, sorry. Sorry about that. Kids screaming. Um, mm-hmm. he, he appears around the corner on a skateboard, actually, now that I think about it. He's, he's skateboarding or in the convention center and he appears on the corner. He stops at Kevin's booth, the only booth he stops at. He reaches over, gives Kevin a hug, tells him that his wife was a sweetheart and says that he loves the Ninja Turtles and got all the pictures and skated off on a skateboard. He was holding a beer too. Now that I think about it, he's holding he, a beer. He may, he may actually be a ninja I turtle. Been <laughs> I hope that's what I have. Wow, Jason Momoa, man, that's, that's great. Crazy. They they should get him in somehow, right? Like like who who would you cast him as? Like a just kind of like a badass Casey Jones character. Jason Momoa, he. I mean, I don't know. I could see him being like a CGI version of like Leatherhead. You know, just all like hook up those little green balls to him and you know he can do the motion capture that's that's so cool <laughs> i could see it i like that i like that a lot so that's um yeah because you've already got your your rock steady bebop and stuff like that so yeah and, and i and i i do hope that like if they do go to like some of the other uh movies like like um that they get away from some of the other stuff like the cartoony stuff and they get to like the idw because there's there's so much there and just like I, I firmly believe that they're killing it right now because this is the one time in Turtles history where they've really been able to focus on the characters and who they are and all that. And huge fan of Sophie Campbell's work. I know not everybody is, and you know, like some of the listeners may not agree with me, but I love that she's been able to. Um, I, I actually told her this. <laughs> um, I, I love that she's been able to tie everything back from like all these old properties, and she's really doing a good job of of bringing those things in like uh, Toka and Razor and tying everybody in just really fun stuff. And I mean, with Venus coming out, you know, it's, it's, it's gotta be just like a, an awesome, awesome arc. I'm, I'm hoping at least. So we'll see. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I saw a lot of the prelim work that she did. She actually did a cover with Kevin um, recently and uh, she, had, I, I was actually at Kevin's house when she sent it over. And so oh, cool. It to me. It's, so she's got this, uh, Venus is very different. She's got this, uh, um sally from the nightmare before christmas kind of look and feel to her where she's kind of like frankenstein together and kind of sewed together um, can you confirm if that's a frog foot i can or cannot i actually don't oh, okay. know all right <laughs> my head, uh, i can you know text some people were yeah some point. people were asking that yeah go ahead text kevin it's okay no, it's good. no. Very much could please, be, uh, please don't so 
Um, but yeah, I think it's supposed to be uh, that way. And then the interesting thing is, I think Kevin actually did a, a cover originally that was the original Venus that he had done. And I saw the painting at his house also, but they they said that they couldn't do that, and that's why they made the very last second had to switch and do this new cover. So, but yeah. I think uh, I agree with you on on Sophie. Uh, Sophie's killing it. Um, the these these I wouldn't say they're the second tier characters, but the peripheral characters of the Turtles franchise. You know, like the Punk Frogs and Token and Razor, who aren't like record the bop rock steady um i call them your 10 backs you know the ones that are on the 10 i get you the ones that aren't your 10 backs yeah i'm writing yeah. that down <laughs> yeah if they're not your 10 backs then you know these other characters that she's doing that aren't um she's doing such a great job of like pushing them out and you know, kind of bring kind of this depth to them that we actually didn't really have before um especially you know jenica a brand new character i'm be very interested to see what that they do with venus because you know, the next mutation was was kind of rough at points when it came to be. It, it, it was definitely rough. It was definitely rough. I have to admit. My it son looks, used to watch it. It looks okay. Like, if, if you're just, like, looking at it and you're like, okay, you know, it's like, it's a bit toothy and all that. But like, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, and they're talking and stuff. But it's like, I, I wasn't really into that at the time just because it's like where I was, like, I wasn't going to watch it. And it seemed to me more like Power Rangers. I wasn't really into that at the time. So I'm like, all right, this is a thing. You know, I'm not going to, you know, watch it just because I don't have time or whatever. I'm going to like get into anime or something at this time. You know, <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's where my head was at. But, um, you know, I, I thought that they nailed it with that design. I'm like, this is cool. And the whole idea of using the braid on the on the bandana, mm-hmm. I'm like that's friggin brilliant. Like it's it's just such a good idea. And then then years later, Jenica comes around and I don't know how they were able to do it. Like and, and kudos to Tom, because it's like. He took like, okay, there's four basic personalities. You're either Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, or Raphael. Then it's like, wait a minute, there's a fifth one now. What what do you mean? You know, and it's like this person is so individual and unique, it doesn't fit the mold of any of these others, but it could. It's it's just so cool. And and I'm I'm really looking forward to see what's going on because now we've got three female turtles. We've got Lita. You know, we've got um, in future Lita, I guess, but uh, <laughs> we will have Venus and uh, and Jenica. So you've got your own little squad there, and I, I just think it's the coolest thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, after decades of never having a single one, now you know you have multiple. It's uh, crazy. I'm sure Peter probably isn't too happy, but you know, but that's what do, that's what we do, hear a lot. Yeah, Wait, that's that's one of our goals. I, I know um, I, I've never got to meet. I grew up in Connecticut, which, and I was so close to those guys. I never got to meet them, but a lot of my friends got to meet uh, Kevin and Pete at some of the early shows. And um, I know Eric's Eric's hoping so badly that he gets a chance to meet Pete. You know, hopefully one day. You know, maybe maybe he'll come yeah. back out of retirement. You know, yeah, it's just tricky because you know he's he's in retirement and you know he's probably comfortably retired and just hanging out with his grandson Archie and. You know, just living on the farm. It's, it's, you know, no need to come out and see anybody. I think uh, the hope is that the, you know, the, the resurgence and the, the new movie and everything like that, if it's well received, hopefully it'll still it'll come out of the woodwork and you know, say hi to everybody. Until then, he's going to do this JD Salinger thing and just kind of hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that we get to see some of these other ones. Like, um, like I know Steve, Steve Levine's doing a cover for Jetpack, and I I ordered that as soon as possible, so um, I I'm gonna get that. I'm like a huge Michael Dooney fan. I've got Mike up there. He's he's um, so when it's like I would love to see a Dooney cover if if that. Um, I know it's probably too late at this point, but um, you know like like some of these old Mirage guys, I would love to see them get into this and and just uh, you know maybe maybe even just get back into making some money from this stuff you know because their their stuff is just so perennial and classic you know like uh was it rick v- uh, veach you know i'd imagine if he, if he was still doing stuff like do i get him into it you know that, that would have been so cool <laughs> zuli yeah like like yeah, all the old mirage guys you know? think, uh, yeah and that, i don't even know what they're all doing now that's the thing is that there's like they're they're kind of like spread all around uh, the northeast and, and all doing kind of different things i, think, I know yeah. i know jim lawson's still doing some stuff i saw he did a, a, yeah, he, a rolling cover he did a running cover yep. yeah and he, he he did his own uh property called dragonfly which i think he ended up selling to west briggs and chris Vance, who are 
um, Bish Kids. And I think they're, they've taken the IP and they've, I've actually seen the first issue. I saw the pencils that Chris had done and it looks pretty good. Um, they did a Kickstarter. I think they fully funded it. So I'm hoping that we can get the, uh, the um, you know, the actual physical copies out pretty soon. You, that's one of the kind of two guys you should guys should consider bringing onto your podcast as well. Um, because they, they bought that IP straight up of a gym and Jim has helped them kind of massage it to where it is. And it looks pretty good. Um, they announced the last grant that they had this awesome print and they announced, uh, you know, some Kickstarter stuff that they were doing. So I think they're um, a good set of people that you guys should talk to. We, we definitely should. And, and we are Bish kids. So, you know, um, yeah. I've got my box Before here actually. <laughs> yeah, I got my we we got our I got my name tags ready for when we go down to uh, Lexington. So I got the name tags ready. I'll have my ID ready for Kevin Eastman. So I'm God, I'm gonna see a lot of Ben the next uh, the next <laughs> three weeks. I'm gonna be seeing a lot. I'm of sorry. Him. I'm sorry. He's a murderer, though. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I love I love that you're wearing the shirt too, and it says he killed Raph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> killed them all. Yeah. Ben, ben has uh, Ben has eluded us for a little bit because um, we we didn't want to put him on the spot. We didn't want it to be something where it's like, "Hey, tell us about Ronan," and we're just going to ask him about Ronan. You know, it's like so. So tell us. You know, it's like and hey, I, well, um, we we'll don't do want to do Let's do one of these from uh, Lexington, and I'll get him. I'll get him liquored up, and then we can get him on the show. You should, man. You should do this. I, if I'll, I'll send the Zoom link, not a problem. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'll, yeah, well, yeah, totally. I think he's be there. What else is he gonna do? So let me let me go back to ask it here. So with with Tentacle Ten, you know, um, I actually just bought something. I think the other night I bought a Santa Luco cover. So um, Sweet. Awesome. I, I saw that you you've got some cool stuff for sale there, um, Eric. I, I don't know if you saw that they've got a fourth uh, first printing of number four for uh, seven hundred and fifty bucks on there. That's a freaking graded. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. I think it's a five, but still, I mean, that's a hell of a price. You got some yeah. great stuff on the website, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so the company itself was actually, um, it, it's fairly new. Actually, I had been working with uh, with Kevin with another company that I started called Comics and Ponies. And then I kind of dissolved that um, in 2020 and I started. Uh, was that because of My Little Ponies at all or? A lot, yeah, a lot okay. of it had to do with it. It was just, um, it, it was a company that started with uh, a, a guy I had met at conventions a couple of years ago and it just it never really fit the brand um you know, on top of that like as i had kind of like grown into the comic industry and the, and the role um it's kind of felt the need to kind of bring in like more of my family into the into the uh into the sphere of comics in the industry um the reason why is because you know the, the the other partner in this tentacle 10 company is my brother and you, know, you remember growing up as kids playing turtles with your brother you gave him all the broken figures and you know you kept all the awesome ones <laughs> so hey, you know man. yeah so around 2020 <laughs> yeah Avery approached him and said hey man you want to you want to start this cover just do turtles company with me um i'm thinking about leaving comics and ponies and he said uh he goes yeah hell yeah i love turtles and so who doesn't love turtles so uh i know right yeah we started the groundwork up we started uh building up the business and um kind of went through it like a silent phase i should say and then as the pandemic kind of is, you know, tapering off, we're being a little bit more, you know, you're seeing us a lot more in terms of our presence. And that was, you know, purposeful to build us up in terms of uh, our, our presence at conventions. So you're, you're going to see a lot more of uh, this logo, this logo here yep. um, on tour. Um, and on top of that, you'll probably see a lot more of our, our products as we kind of, you know, collaborate with better and more um, artists that we have in our, our stable, like, you know, we just uh, we had Justin Roiland doing all of our covers with Kevin. Yeah, that's that's what blew my freaking mind because you are the only one I know that still <laughs> has those covers. Everybody else doesn't doesn't have them, and, and I was like, what? How do they have these? Yeah, <laughs> well, well, you we, you commissioned them. them. Yeah, we yeah. made them, so that's why we have them. I mean, so uh, issue number one, we started with Justin, and it was just him and Kevin were huge fans of each other, and they they wanted to collaborate on something, and so. Um, we had to find the right property. I remember us talking around issue Turtles 100. We were talking to Justin about doing a cover, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of people doing it. Let me let me think about it." And so that didn't end up happening. But then when Last Ronin came about, um, I kind of reached out to him, to Justin, and I just messaged him and said, "Hey, this new this new IP is coming out, and it's pretty awesome." And so he was like, "Yeah, totally." So he committed to you know all five issues um, with the, uh, this 
Kevin was the anchor and Kevin Rick and Morty fans was like, hell yeah, I totally want to want to work with Justin. So they've been collabing for the last five issues. And we starting with issue number one, we, we did three cover fades. We did a, a pencil, which is just Justin's goofy pencils um, and inks version, which is basically Kevin's, you know, elaboration of those. And then a colored version, which is ultimately the finished product is what you would see on, on, on a yeah. shelf. But uh, no, we, um, we, we had a lot of them in our warehouse when we kind of cleared out of our stuff and we put them up on the site and they've been kind of, you know, selling as, um, as we've been putting up there. Um, with the exception of issue four, where we had a lot of them actually in my, my buddy's house and his house burned down. So that's actually a rare oh. one. Yeah, last one in four, we had uh, about half That's a great cover. One. Yeah, absolutely. It was the, the Detective Comics um, homage. That was one of the ones that... Uh, we, I, I, I typically will take a bunch of pictures and Photoshop them together, and then I'll send them along to like Justin and Kevin, just for inspiration. And then based off of that, they'll they'll do something up. And that's how all of the covers actually became, including issue five, which comes out um, next month. So how many um, how many variants did you do for uh, for these? Then did you start with just the one for number one, or I, I guess you could count like like the the white and, and the uh, the pencils and all that like what what's your um your number did you have like more than one artist i guess is the better question yeah for issue number one um there was a buddy of mine named kenneth rockefort he was uh an artist on cyber force uh the ultimates and red hood and the outlaws as well as like detective and batman comics and so he he did a a cover that was a homage to uh a daredevil cover um i have daredevil. that one actually yeah that's that's actually one of my favorites uh that was a hard ass one to get yeah <laughs> and that's i love it because i after that i i went looking crazy for the fred hembeck one so that that yeah. was a uh, very similar because those those daredevil homages are just you know they they do unbelievable numbers so everybody wants to kind of do them it's hard doing it right too um getting like the images down but we found that this was the perfect kind of mix of you know daredevil and kind of turtles because he's great by the way i i love his stuff so no absolutely i mean he's by far um he was actually one of the reasons i even got back into comics yeah his very first convention that he was at was at uh, baltimore comic con in 2008 i want to say or 2007 and i was kind of out of college and i had just been working for a couple of years so you know gotten out of comics since you know high school and college because you know girls don't like comics so you kind of get out of comics and so i remember yeah i, I noticed that actually yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, they don't, <laughs> I, I had also noticed that yeah yeah apparently going into a bar and telling girls you have cgc 9.8 like doesn't really, yeah they don't really do anything for you um it's a metal yeah exactly. oh okay yeah that's great you realize there was only three of these in the world yeah, um, exactly but <laughs> Sorry, my wife got scared when she seen my tattoo of the turtles on my leg. So I, can, I almost scared her off from that. Ooh, yeah, I mean, I would you would have scared me off too. I, I'm, I don't even. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just it's just funny. It's one of those things where like I don't have any tattoos, so I couldn't imagine you know meeting somebody with a turtle's tattoo on, and you know. Yeah, but I, uh, I, I have I have a leg piece of them. I'm gonna have to see that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take a picture of that and post it in Epic Shells, man. So. Yeah, totally. Um, but uh, Ken, oh, Kenneth, I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying with that, yeah. with with your leg though, it's like, how long is it? Like the whole leg? Or are we going like all the way up? We're, yeah, we're going. It, it's it's full leg. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, Leonard. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's under my butt cheek. So. It's oh, okay. <laughs> That one, I'll just take your word for it on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can only go so far up. But um, actually, it's actually the uh, picture of, you know, he has those coats up for auction, Kevin Eastman's website, yeah. where he has it. Okay, that, that the picture of those turtles, all those turtles, how, like, Leo's got his sword out and all that stuff like that. That's what I got going up my leg. Uh, okay. Nice. That's fun. That's super fun. I know what going oh, yeah, back I to, saw, to them at, uh, saw them at San Diego Comic Con. Oh, cool. And I know uh, Nor Nor has uh, Nori has the uh, two turtle tattoos. He says he's got the uh, the original Kevin Eastman Raph doing kind of his his side things. But he's a big Raph mm -hmm. guy. So, but we we didn't get to ask you yet, uh, David. Who's your favorite turtle? 
My favorite turtle is Michelangelo because I'm a party dude. You're a Mikey guy. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm a party dude. Well, dude. <laughs> and my core, that's what I am. So, yeah. I love that. That's that's great. So, and, uh, you know, you'd be drinking whiskey with uh, Ron Perlman. and <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, orange is my favorite color as well. So. Oh, mine too. Like, without a doubt. It always has been. I love it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. You'll always, it's a couple of questions you always hear in line is, uh, you know, what's your favorite pizza? And what's your favorite turtle? Those are the two ones I always hear. Um, and Kevin always says, you know, Mikey's the first one he made. So you're always kind of partial to it. So everyone, everyone who's in the know likes Mike the best. I'm a Leo guy. You know, it's just, you know, my thing. It's, it's funny too, because like we, we were talking about this book, this rad plastic book. And, and um, I think I was going through it and it had some original prelims of how Leonardo was originally orange. I'm like, oh, weird, crazy. You know, I had no idea. I thought he was always going to be blue, but I mean, technically red, but still. Yeah. You know. I, at one point they were all black. Yeah, they're all black it's... and white, you know. <laughs> It was great. You know, um, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun at this con. You know, I'm, I'm super jealous. I wish I got a chance to get out there. So, but um, yeah, um, I don't know, Eric, uh, did you have any questions for, for David um, just about other stuff we haven't talked to yet? Uh, no, I mean, I don't have any questions. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to actually meet you in person, to be honest with you, you and, you know, I get to meet Kevin again for the second time and Ben for the first time now. But I mean, I don't know. I might have some questions for you when I come down there. <laughs> All right, totally. Yeah, I mean, but, I'll be there. I fly in Friday night, so I get in Friday at like eleven p.m. and uh, so I'll be on site. And you know, with the the time zone change, it's always a killer because I get in at like eleven, but it's like you know awesome. eight for me. So I'm always up, yeah. and I always want to do something. Um, yeah. So you know, find me. You'll probably find us at the bar. Um, <laughs> I'll, be, really uh, I'll be there. I'll be there Saturday. Uh, me and my wife we're going down saturday we're getting a hotel we're not going into the comic con on, on saturday but you know we're going to try to get down there and get settled down uh and then sunday you know we're going to be in there we'll probably be in there most of the day and stuff talking you know talking with you guys talking with kevin and then and so on and so forth so i don't know i'll probably i might be able to meet i'll probably meet you up with you guys on saturday night or something like that you know i'll probably text you and see what's going on see where all the this kids are going to be at because i figure they'll probably be uh doing their little thing yeah they'll they be doing some work. stuff yeah <laughs> uh, they'll be doing something you know so yeah it's the craziest group of guys it's uh they they travel we we i like to say that they travel like steelers fans i don't know if you guys are football fans or not but they travel like steelers mm. fans because steelers fans are always they always take over the stadium that you're, they're playing it so if they're playing the chargers it's always like 90 percent steelers fans i feel like or you know when they play the packers it's always like always steelers fans everywhere so they travel they're everywhere and the bish kids were they always make things a good time though um that's good yeah yeah we 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 love the bish kids especially our buddy uh, rob detter you know um yeah. shout out to rob shout out to mm -hmm. uh to ben and emily over there you know uh doing a great job and the bish kids uh every friday we we send our um uh, our thumbs up which is really just uh flip each other off every friday <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah it's it's good stuff it's uh it's never it's never dry in that group it's just always fun it's mm -hmm. one of the best things i think i ever did was uh just get get signed up for the the bish kids club and it's been so much fun so it'll be interesting to see what happens after ronin too because uh with drawing blood and all that you know uh ben's supremely talented and I, i'm looking forward to seeing what else he's gonna be putting out yeah i mean he's he's got a couple of things planned i know um aside from the Ronin stuff and the drawing blow stuff, you know, he'll, he'll stay busy. He, we had him do a Lego number one Garmin on cover yes. for uh tentacle 10. And so that, that came out. And so I'm sure there's going to be no shortage of other folks just like us who will, who will want his services for a cover. Um, I just think it's interesting that they keep on giving him IP that's like related to children. I'm like, if you actually knew, this guy you wouldn't want him anywhere near children's products <laughs> he needs he needs to get some star wars work man like like put him on the bounty hunters book or something like that you know and uh and get that like that would be perfect like get some of that going that's it's true because his mandalorian style is uh is kind of pretty on point and uh i mean he says his his line work is so precise too so kind of really works with uh star wars because it's all like very technical and it's got those very intricate pieces that he does very well 
Yeah, I, I like it. Um, maybe, maybe you can answer this. Maybe you can't. But um, we have been wondering about this. Is there anything in talks right now for a sequel to The Last Ronin or like a follow-up series or a prequel or something like that? Well, I mean, that's logically where you would think this would go, right? Um, like a Casey Marie Jones series, which is like, you know, do it. Like, I'll, I'll pre-order it now. You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't say one thing or another... Um... I just know that, you know, IDW has lost a lot of uh, IPs this last year. Yeah. They, lose, they lost the license to uh, Hasbro. So they lose like G.I. Joe and they lose Transformers. So they yeah, they still like... have Rom the Space Knight. So yeah. Rom, will, Rom will find a following someday. <laughs> hey, I, I like Rom. For, for the record, I like Rom. Giant metal space mittens and all that. I'm like, it's a good friggin' book that was based on a terrible toy, you know, and, and yeah. just like from the years that it spent in like Marvel and all that, and, and then it comes over here. Rom was in that first contact, I think, the, the first wave, you know, where it was Mask and G.I. Joe and Transformers all together. Absolutely, and that's actually, it's funny because that is like my wheelhouse of collecting. It's uh, people people always kind of laugh because they're like, why do you collect such weird stuff? But one of the things that I collect is just the 80s IPs, like cartoon IPs. So like really heavy into the, the Thundercats. So I have like Thundercats, nice. many copies of Thundercats number one. I have like original pages from the Thundercats series. From Star Comics, right? Yeah, exactly from the start. And like, so I have also the, the He-Man stuff. So I have all the, the first appearance of He-Man and, you know, the first Marvel He-Man and stuff like that. So uh, again, original pages from that. It's just like the thing that I collect, uh, you know. So, uh, you oh, know, that's got to be that's got to be great too. Like some of the original artwork from like those mini comics. Those were those were gorgeous. Yeah, and for the turtle stuff, like I have a lot of the the original mini comics that they did for the cereal boxes that uh, Steve actually had a while ago. He was trying. He was selling a bunch of them that he did for the the color for the mini comics. First so. appearance of Wingnut and Screwless. Yeah, I, I'm actually I, I'm in the market to get some of those eventually. Like uh, I've they're, seen they're, some mounted and they look great. They look yeah, exactly because they're so so small and so they present really awesome because they're so like colorful, colorful too. This is back before you know digital coloring all of that. So it was all hand colored and all hand inked. It looks amazing. So I have a couple of them. I have uh, one of the ones with uh, Ray Filet, I think. And I think also have one where they're using like a fly swatter, like Leonardo. Um, so you know, those are, those are some pretty cherished pieces that I have. And so that's really cool. Yeah, that's I, I mean, like my my goal is to one day own a cover, you know, like just something like that. And and um, I was definitely looking into some of the older Mirage books that I've seen around. And you know, um, I I would love to get something from Soul's Winter because to me that was one of the most original things ever, and that is kind of like a precursor to Last Ronin. Like if you know the story, you're like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because it it plays out like the issue number one of of Last Ronin when when he wakes up, you know, from that dream, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, but um, Probably different yeah. little Easter egg there, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. So it, it's all good. But um, but I don't, I don't want to uh, keep you any any longer because I, I know it's probably getting close to either dinner time or bedtime or something. But, um, <laughs> yeah, probably at bedtime. I can hear them lining yeah. up at the door. <laughs> but um, I want to thank you. And um, w where can folks find you? Because obviously we have Tentacle Ten, and mm -hmm. um, we'll we'll uh, direct people to your site. But uh, where pe can people find you and interact with you and all that? So you can find us, uh, Tentacle 10, on Instagram. It's Tentacle 10 Entertainment on Facebook. Um, we will be on tour with Kevin Eastman. We are the official uh, CGC facilitator and witness, uh, his witness, signature witness and authentication um, services at any of his tour stops in America and Canada, because I think we just added Montreal this year oh, cool. um, in June. Nice. So we'll be seeing everybody over there. Um, but you'll see me on tour. Um, you'll see the CGC witness. His name is Chris. Every once in a while, you'll, you'll probably see my brother. Um, his name is Tony, but we call him Fats. Like he's a Italian gangster. Um, so you're not allowed to call him anything <laughs> but Fats. Okay. So when you see him on tour, um, I know mean, you'll be able to see me. We'll have the shirt on. Um, strike a conversation with me. Have more than I think we lost that. It was obviously one of my favorite topics to talk about. Oh yeah, I was saying I'm more than happy to talk turtles at any time because you know, obviously my one of my favorite topics of conversation is turtles. Um, 
and you know the comic industry in general so that's awesome um, yeah we'll see us on you, tour and can't, can't wait to see y'all you guys can ask him when we're going to get that uh my little pony crossover that we so deserve so <laughs> that's like I, i'm probably not gonna happen now that uh that bobby's Has- gone right <laughs> well hasbro pulled the uh the license or hasbro they're losing the hasbro license so um, oh that's right that's yeah. a hasbro one too i forgot about they're that yeah. my little pony as well so you'll probably never see it uh Eric, eric's crying that's all right <laughs> All right, with, with that, um, and I will take a, uh, a break, and then we'll come back with our pizza recipe. So th- thanks again, David, for being here. All right, thank you thank all. You. Take care. It's pizza time. And now, in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you pizza time. Hey everyone, after talking to Eric and David about cons, it got me to thinking, what do you do after a long night of cons? Maybe you need something for breakfast, right, to get you going after all that drinking the day before? So today's pizza is going to be the breakfast pie, the ultimate breakfast, or lunch, or dinner, of champions. Michelangelo likes to top his one off with a splash of hot sauce and a few squirts of ketchup. Ingredients, extra virgin olive oil for greasing, four slices thick cut bacon, chopped, one pound ball pizza dough, homemade or store-bought, four large eggs, three quarters cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, one fourth cup heavy cream, fine sea salt and freshly ground black pepper, one tablespoon finely chopped fresh chives. Instructions, preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit with a rack in the middle position. Lightly coat with a heavy duty rimmed baking sheet with olive oil. Place the bacon in a medium skillet over medium heat and cook until it begins to crisp, just about five to seven minutes. Remove the skillet from the heat and transfer the bacon into a paper towel lined plate. Step three, stretch or roll the dough onto a 12 inch disc and place it into the prepared baking sheet. Step four, crack the eggs into separate small prep bowls or ramekins. Step five, scatter the cheese over the dough, followed by the bacon. Step six, drizzle the cream evenly over the top. Carefully slide the eggs onto the pizza an inch or two inside the edge, evenly distributed. Step seven, season with salt and pepper. Step eight, transfer the baking sheet to the oven and bake until the crust is golden. The the egg whites are set and the yolks are still a little squishy, about 10 to 15 minutes. Remove the pizza from the oven, let it rest for five minutes, then sprinkle with the chives. Slice and serve. Lighten it up, dudes. You can use whole wheat pizza dough or even vegan turkey or bacon and low-fat cheese instead of the half-and-half cream or heavy cream. All right, thanks, everybody. That is your breakfast pie. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. (laughs) With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Greetings! We are the Retro Redoctopus Cephala Podcast, the bi-weekly show that celebrates all the things that made growing up awesome. He's right. We wax philosophic about lots of geeky crap like old video games and movies, toys, cartoons. I don't know. Help me out here. Music. Pants. Quoting video games that don't have dialogues. Shabibans. Tasty news. Unnecessarily long Japanese onomatopoeia. Butt breathers. Uncomfortable nature facts. Or how to install a samoplage. 
And unlike all those other podcasts, we at Retro Octopus have an exciting rotating host schedule. Do we? We sure do. So, if you didn't like the guy flapping his gums this week, like me, worry not, gentle listener. Next week, we'll have a whole new host. Of problems. Hey, they might still suck, but they'll suck differently. And you know what's really cool? Retro Red Octopus is part of the Dorkening and Inebriar Podcast Networks, with new episodes every Tentacle Tuesday. Which is like every other Tuesday. We named it. Anyways, you can listen to us at iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, or any podcast player cool enough to carry the only show that celebrates all things that make growing up awesome. 